Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to show you step by step and acrylic how you can create this abstract painting that kind of feels like a seascape. It's an abstract seascape. The techniques are really fun to learn. They translate to big and small canvases. That part is really great. This is part of Acrylic April, a 30-day painting program where we get together and we paint every single day. And this year's Acrylic April is all about abstract art. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps bring these lessons by making sure the camera's pointing at what I'm talking talking about and that you know you guys can really see what's going on uh, I hope you guys are loving it there's a lot of resources if you go to the website you will see that there's a link to a school where these classes are all sequential and there's some extra content if you want that but of course you can just use the YouTube videos and what's on our website um, we have a store where you can buy the materials that you see in the show you don't have to I'm just saying it's there and um, there's book if that would be helpful and there's also a group where you can share your art and get a lot of support so whether you've come for just this one painting or you've come for all 30 paintings because you've decided I'm going to face my fear of abstract or you're like, I'm going to enjoy and celebrate my passion for abstract. We got you covered. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back. I'm really going to show you how to paint this. So today we are working on an eight by eight stretch canvas. Again, I have Hansa lemon yellow or is it lemon yellow Hansa? I always reverse that. Let me make sure I've got that because that was lemon yellow Hansa. Those words in those order. Truth is, it's lemon yellow, hence a yellow light, cad yellow light, cad lemon. Any of those will get you to a cool yellow. So, but this is the one I like, you know, uh, there we go. Thalo green, thalo blue, burnt sienna, and a lot of titanium white. Shall we throw up a step? I'm going to get a nice handy dandy hog bristle round. You could do a bright or anything, but what I like about this is the scruffy bristles of it. And I'm going to go ahead and start with white on white here very easy part of the painting look at that hardly any work at all take a little bit of these together maybe a little burnt sienna so thalo green thalo blue a little bit of burnt sienna and i'm gonna just start creating this sort of irregular diffused unfocused world Notice that my brush handle goes down, it goes up. I'm really trying to hide the brushwork more through directionality and scumbling than other things, than other means. When I come over the white paint that's still wet, I lighten up my pressure and that helps lighten up the marks. I can come in and get some white here. We're just thinking about it. A little burnt sienna and thalo blue. Oh, that's nice and dark. Let's come over here. Now you can paint around the sides if you aren't framing. If you are framing, you have to at least paint around the turn, the, the fold of the surface. I like uh, the scritchy scritch of the brush, John. Yeah, I do too. I really like that. I went a little deeper on my phthalo blue there. Kind of working that in. Going quite dark on my phthalo blue. I want to get a little white right here and kind of create some cloudy atmosphere between these two. So even if you aren't painting a specific object like a cloud, sometimes you will get effects in your abstracts that are cloud-like. I'm just working the paint into the canvas. Uh, on a hog bristle brush, I will periodically rinse out and squeeze out the extra water. And that's really just to make sure the paint isn't drying into the bristles. I'm getting a little white into here. little 
burnt sienna and thalo blue, thalo green, and white. Darker on that little edge there. You can see where I'm sort of blending in. What I do is I scumble and I do quick little back and forth brush strokes. So that's another way to kind of get in there from wet into wet maybe is work the brush work. Add a little more white and I am going in a back and forth motion. So I'm really just filling up this canvas, right? And we'll rinse out. And while I'm here, I'm going to get some just white. Come sort of in this area where I had sort of just put white, right? And work this all out through the paint just as a place to start. and make sure it's got a nice soft edge down here. Wiping off. I'm going to bring a little of this white up too. See I'm sort of wiggling the brush around. All right now I'm not going to dry but let's call this step one but without drying. Okay that was, that was, so we're going to go on to step two. Step two just right into it no drying. Now I have this sort of white focal point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and accentuate some of what happened here. See how we're doing? Building up some of the white. Now I can come back. I wipe off my brush and I can come back with blue. Just blue. if it gets too away from me, right? Back in there with some white and then working the blue in there. So you can see it blends into that blue and that, that helps it be kind of soft. So it is giving us kind of a cloud effect, isn't it? Kind of a nice little cloud-like structure. And I think in these sort of very atmospheric um, paintings where you have this sort of effect. I'm taking the burnt sienna and the thalo blue and thalo green and making kind of a nice dark color. And I'm going to come in and this is almost like a glazing. I'm wiping off on my paper towel to make sure I don't have extra water in the brush. And I'm going to come in and maybe darken some of this. Come back with a little bit of white on the toe of the brush. I do like a hog brush on a round for this type of technique. It is some of my faves. Maybe come over here and Sort of wiggle, very light pressure. See how light the pressure is? And that creates kind of a interest right there, doesn't it, as it travels off. So sometimes and I like this quite a lot abstracts can have a smoky feel or a cloudy feel to them, you know. Wiggle here. Very light pressure. You can see a lot of the surface is showing through. I mean, not the, the blue, not the white canvas, but the blue. And that's just a very kind of in-depth 
forever space. I am not going to worry about drying the canvas. We're just going to go on to step three. This one is cooking today. I don't know what to tell y'all. <laughs> That's all right. So it's, I'm gonna... just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cloudy thing. It's kind of some abstracty thoughts about clouds, I guess. I'm going to come from the bottom. And I'm going to brush up. I've taken the phthalo blue and the phthalo green. Quite dark. I'm going to be brushing up. You see how it brushes up? And then I'm going to take this and quite a bit of white. It's a little bit more green, isn't it? I'm going to brush into that dark value. Pulling that up. I might even get a little of that Put out way more lemon yellow than I needed, but rinse out. Really kind of scruff out this brush. A little phthalo blue, phthalo green. Oh, burn sienna. Gets it so dark. Just little lines coming up. A little bit. Kind of coming up here on the side. All right, so we're pulling up into that energy. I'm going to wipe off my brush on the paper towel. So I'm getting the pigment off that way. And I'm going to take a little of my Thalo blue and lemon yellow and a lot of white. And brush it back down in. See how we're doing? I do. And lemon yellow and a little more white. Just right up here. Through here, up on this little edge. Very much like those colors together. Okay. Let's call that a step. And just to throw y'all, I am going to try it. <laughs> We're going to dry a little bit. So it doesn't have to be thoroughly dry, but I rinsed out my brush so that it was fairly clean. And I'm going to take a little bit of my white and I'll go ahead and grab some of that um, burnt sienna and a, and a little titch of the phthalo blue, which kind of grays it a bit. I'm going to come at the top of this and just sort of tap my little brush down, up and down. I'm just coming down here. Like that. Just work a little highlight. At the top of it. Just something fun. I think one of my very favorite things is uh, abstract seascapes. They are stunning in yeah. a house. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're stunning when they get big. You do this particular one big, it's just going to really catch the eye. And easier to do than you might think. I want that one to be a little different than that. 
So sometimes I'll be like, no, I want that little white to be a little bit there. So I will fix it for my own preferences. Does that make sense? And would you be that fussy with it? Yeah, I think you should be this fussy with it. Rinsing out. I'm just trying to make this a little more dramatic through that whole space. My dark color again was my burnt sienna, my thalo green, and my thalo blue. There we go. See, I just wanted it to be dark through there. And I'll bring a couple little lines up that are deep in motion, right? From this little edge. Quite dark and and exciting. Rinse out. I'm going to just touch a couple places with a very thick application. This is impasto. Where I'm painting very thick with the brush. See how thick it is? I don't know if John can get in on how thick this is, but we should get all close up in it because I know that's what you guys are going to want to see. Just get right in there. Got to do more zooms this acrylic April. You are so quiet today. Is it the painting is just chilling you? I think so. I just like I'm, it's, it's just sort of a very calm, you know. You, and it's funny. Would you think that it would be such a calm painting given the topic, right? I don't know. It's abstract. This could, right. This could be a race car. Well, it could be, but hopefully it elicits feelings of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I that's what it, I, I hope. think it does. Kind of bringing some stuff up there. I'm just sort of painting this thick. I think that looks really nice on the dried piece when people get up on it when it's thick like that. You know, plus you get some nice little highlights. Okay, guys. This is it. I'm going to have That's... to dry it. And um, I'm, again, inclined to sign the side. Um, this is one, if you're not going to frame, you definitely want to bring the blue-green around and sign the side. I know that's like, obviously, wave, and you could do the signature down here. But if I sign light enough for it to be visible, then that is a light down here in this area. I worked very hard to preserve dark, so I'm inclined not to do it. Yeah, okay. But I'll do it on the side or the back. So it's not unsigned. It's just not signed in any area that interferes with the art. I hope you like to, like, this, how easy is it to do an abstract seascape? Not the only one we'll be doing, but I think that these are some of the most fun and um, give us some of the most joy. And remember, yours is right. No matter how yours splashes, no matter how your clouds fl flow and puff through the landscape. Um, that's the hardest thing about abstract is knowing that you're okay. Because yeah. especially if you think you can see anything in it, the need is to um, start leaning it into it, its objective topic and not stay rooted in you know, balance and weight and the way the flow goes around the piece and the color that's in it and the texture that's in it. So that's kind of something that abstract asks us to do is it asks us to ask ourselves, um, you know, how does this line work? And, you know, is it, is it valid in the piece? And are these values valued in the piece? And that's kind of a fun conversation to be having. I hope you guys are loving this acrylic april it has been a lot of fun for me so far um definitely something different than you know i traditionally do i get asked for a lot of abstracts i feel like by the end of this month i'll be like hey <laughs> i got besides the ones i've done before i've got you super covered here <laughs> now you can subscribe to the channel be sure and subscribe leave me a comment if you have any questions don't forget there's a school if you need this in a sequential single location and there's some extra content over there um there is also the acrylic april group where you can share your paintings and get support and encouragement materials and tools that you saw on the show are available on our store 
Um, you don't have to buy from us. I'm just saying they're there. <laughs> it's, it's a good place to go. But I always want you to be smart consumer. So very soft on that. Yep. Um, there's book and uh, what, have I forgotten anything? There's so many I things. I don't think so. I think there's, there's so, so many. many things. <laughs> Hopefully you're just feeling overwhelmed with good, fun art things to do. I want you guys to be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.